Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we invite you this evening to speak to us through your Holy Spirit. Silence every other voice, dear Lord. I pray that I decrease and you increase in me this evening. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of fellowship. You desire that we live in fellowship to the glory and honor of your name. Amen and amen. Once again, praise the living God. I give thanks amen. to God for this opportunity to be able to share the word of God together. The topic that I was given is building intimacy with God in prayer building intimacy with God in prayer. And the scripture is Mark chapter 1, verse 35 to 39. Mark 1, 35 to 39. The gospel of Mark, also known as the book of Mark, is found in the New Testament of the Bible. And it is the shortest of the four gospels in the New Testament. The book of Mark was authored by John Mark around 70 AD. One of the most important aspects of the Gospel of Mark is that it details the life of our Lord Jesus Christ, the miracles he performed, and the salvation that his death offered his followers. Mark wrote his Gospel for Christians in Rome. During that time, during that time, these, the Romans were worshiping the gods of the earth. And when Mark wrote this gospel, he wanted his readers to know that Jesus is the only true son of God. Praise the Lord. Once again, the topic I was given is building intimacy with God in prayer. In the book of John chapter 14, verse 20, the Bible tells us that Christ desires that we live in one, as one with him, that he may be one with us in the Father and with one another. The relationship God desires to have with man is that God and man become one. God wants to be one with man. Praise the Lord. I would like to highlight just maybe one or two uh, definitions. One, intimacy. Intimacy means a close relationship. And the second term that I would like to briefly highlight is building. In simple terms, building is the action of constructing something. Then what is prayer? Since our topic is building a relationship with Christ in prayer. Prayer, again, in simple terms, is communion or communication with God. When we pray, we engage in a loving fellowship with the maker of heaven and earth. Prayer is a priority. In the book of Acts chapter two, verse 42 to 47, the apostles devoted themselves to prayer and reading the word of God. Prayer is the kind um, that lies at the root of 
all others at the root of life itself. Prayer is a lot, um, a lot more like eating physical food. Um, if we rarely eat, definitely we will have health challenges. We will suffer, we will be weak. It will affect our vitality to carry on our activities of life. Similarly, if we, we rarely pray, our spiritual life will be under attack. Our spiritual life will not have great energy. If we don't pray, we will approach the challenges and the successes of life on our own as though we are not totally dependent on God. So without prayer, we begin to take credit for the good things in our lives. We begin to forget that all our skill, knowledge, wisdom, and hard work are, are gifts from God. We forget all that. On the other hand, without prayer, we fall into fear, anxiety, worry, despair, frustrations of life. We become unsure of God's love, unsure of what we are going through. We feel alone, we feel discouraged, we, we doubt everything. Prayer is like grease, that oily stuff, so to speak, that keeps the gears and the wheels of life in good working order. In, in the course of prayer, we learn to see that true, the true state of things, that we are creatures within a creation, creatures dependent on one true God. We are never alone. We discover this through prayer, through communication with God. Now, building a relationship with God can be one of the most tra transformative experiences of a person's life. The more believers spend time in the presence of God, the stronger they become, both spiritually and physically. So intimacy with God is something that we, we, we as believers ought to, to strive for, to ensure that our relationship with God is going to another level. And it is through this intimacy that we, we experience a deep, our relationship with God. At the end of the day, the goal and the primary purpose of our lives is to have a relationship with God. Praise the Lord. My personal testimony, partly in the interest of time, my relationship with God was not there because I knew God as God of rules, God of do's, God of strict rules. And so I did not enjoy my relationship with God. I did not understand his love for me. I could say that he was my God because he was my parents' God, 
by default. My view of God was all about what, what, what then, O oh Lord? What then? Because I did not understand him. I did not hear him. I did not grow in his word. So I became rebellious, looking for solace in, in, in different relationships elsewhere. Today, I stand and testify that I have an intimate personal relationship with God. And it's the best gift that has ever happened to me. I have found godly relationships through having a relationship with the Father. I have now godly relationships. I have the peace of Christ. I have freedom and security and true love of our Lord Jesus Christ. In my relationship with God, I have known the power of his amazing grace. And I will not hesitate to share what I've learned, what I am learning with my, from my father and through godly relationship. I will not hesitate to share it with those who have not confessed Christ as Lord and Savior. Friends, walking with God has greatly changed my life and completely transformed my heart. In my relationship with God, I share with him openly all that is in my heart. Unlike before, I, I did not open up to him because I used to say, after all, he is God. He knows what I'm feeling, he knows what I'm experiencing. I was wrong. Friends, intimacy with God is not a, a state of perfection. It's a relationship that grows continuously, even though you may fail. You may fail in your walk with Christ, but never give up. Keep going, keep seeking the Lord. Keep asking him on your knees. Intimacy with God is marked by consistency. Be consistent in your walk with Christ. To make real progress in our walk with God, you, you must be a disciple. A disciple is an unquestionable, a lifelong student. Following the master and his master, this master showing you every detail. As we continue to, 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 to learn about together about building a relationship with Christ in prayer, Jesus Christ is our model. He is our model. We ought to emulate him, that relationship he had with the Father. The text we are given, or the text I was given, is Mark 1, 35 to 39. When we look at verse 39, 35 to begin with, at daybreak, the next morning, Jesus got up. He got up, he left his bed, and went out to an isolated place to pray. Christ himself, the son of the living God, got up at daybreak. He got up to watch the morning gate, the morning glory, if I could use that word. He got up, he left his comfort zone and got up into an isolated place to pray. Jesus, the son of the living God, got up. I want us to get that. He got up. Get up from where you are, my sister. My brother, get up. Let's get up. 
and start to pray. Let's go to another level of prayer, better than last year. Let's ask the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to get up and seek the face of the Lord in this season. We learn that Jesus focused on the areas of growing and nurturing a relationship with his father. There is nothing that he did without prayer. There is nothing that he did without um, seeking his father's face. That's what we learn from this verse. And we learn that it's a discipline. He got up. He regularly prayed. I was actually thinking, oh my God, am I going to read all the scriptures that shows that Jesus prayed? Because that he prayed. The son of God prayed and prayed and prayed without ceasing. It became a discipline. That, that's what we ought to emulate from him, the discipline of prayer, because he is our model. Pray, 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 and pray. Even if you have to get up early in the morning or you prefer you, you find your own suitable time to talk to the Father because there is nothing we are going to do, especially in ministry, but also in other areas as a mother, as a wife, as a businessman. There's nothing we are going to do without prayer. It's in the prayer, it's in the place of prayer that the Holy Spirit descended on Christ the Holy Spirit descended on Christ while he was praying. When we remain in prayer, the Holy Spirit descends. We are able as children of God, as disciples, to tap into the spirit that filled the Lord Jesus Christ because it's that spirit that is within me and within you. No wonder, because he was filled in prayer, because, because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, because he began in a place of prayer. So when he began in a place of prayer, he was filled. And no wonder we see that in Mark 22, 20, 23, 22, people were astonished, amazed at the authority in which he taught. The same applies to you and I. When we remain in that place of prayer, when we are disciplined in prayer, when we seek the face of the Lord, there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we'll see the signs and wonders. He touched that Simon's mother and the fever quickly healed. That you can do and that I can do. But we have work to do on our knees, friends. On our knees. In the same scripture, um, in the same verse, he says, Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place to pray. That is solitude. Solitude. If the son of, of the incarnate, if the, the, the son incarnate found it necessary, really, to commune with the father frequently, how much more? How much more you and I? Take time off. I know we are busy people every day, but we must take time off and pray. We must work on our relationship with God. And we, as we work on our relationship with God, we ought to work on our relationship with man because Christ is all about relationships. We are in the 40 days of prayer as cathedral. Jesus overcame because he prayed. Remember, the scripture in Mark 1 says that the angels surrounded him. They took care of him. Why? Because he was connected in prayer. We are connected as a cathedral in prayer. We shall overcome. The angels of God are with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. God himself is with us. Let us remain in a place of prayer. As Christians, we should not neglect solitude in prayer. In prayer, 
because solitude eliminates distractions, which brings me to, the, to, 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 to verse 36, eliminating distractions, 36 and 37 of Mark 1. Simon and those who were with him, they, they phoned him and said to him, everyone is looking for you. Peter and others, they seemed to have an agenda for Jesus, but Jesus was determined to preach. We must remain focused. It brings me to the second point of distraction. Do you sometimes feel, uh, sometimes find it hard to stay focused? You get distracted quickly. You need to identify the sources of your distractions and align yourself. The sources of distractions are the carnality, the carnal things, or the fleshly desires and thoughts, or other people, or, uh, or circumstances. And by the way, these may not be necessarily bad distractions. Some distractions are good, some distractions are, are bad. Depending on which distraction, we need to walk by the spirit of God, be, have a spirit of discernment. Someone like we are at cathedral now, it's time for, for, for prayer and fasting, then there's distraction of food. We need to get to a level where we are going to say no to food. Food, food, food will always be there. As Christians, if we are going to be successful, in our walk with God and in accomplishing our goals, we must learn how to overcome the distractions of life. There are many, others are unavoidable, but we need to remain in a, in, in a close relationship with God in order to overcome. As Christians, when we start to lose sight of God in his word and his plan for our lives, it can lead us in a wrong direction towards sin. Losing sight of God also causes us to live in fear. If you realize that you're distracted, then you start doubting, then you start fearing, then you know there is a problem. Run back to your place of prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to help you focus on God and block the distractions from your thoughts. In verse 38 and 39, of, of, our, of the same scripture that we are sharing from Mark 35 to 39. Now we are on 38 and 39. And he said to them, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also. For that is why I came. And he went there throughout Galilee preaching in the synagogue, casting out demons, people getting healed. Jesus Christ was, came for a mission. As disciples, we are his disciples. We have a mission. Our mission is to preach the gospel far and near, starting with your household, starting with my household. The most important thing about Jesus' ministry was th to call people back to repentance in Mark 1, 15. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Let us tell people we do not have time. We do not have much time, friends. I don't know how you have scheduled your program to minister to God's people this year. But like, like Jesus invited Matthew and Simon 
to come follow him. That is what we are going to schedule. And later he invited John and James to drop whatever they, they were doing, the nets, and they immediately, they left and came, came and joined in. Friends, the harvest is plenty, the laborers are few. Let us preach the gospel of Christ. If you're in counseling, you're in business, you're in an office, let us prioritize as a mother, as a husband. Our lives must be the moving Bible to people out there. It, it, it would be great if we did it on a weekly basis. It would be great if we did it every day to share the love of Christ. The world is perishing. That's why Jesus couldn't go back to where they were calling him because he had to continue preaching. He was on mission. He had to continue evangelizing. We need to get up from our comfort zone. I am not saying that we are not preaching wherever we are. I know we are doing a great job, but let's get it to another level. As we continue to cultivate our relationship with Christ in the spirit of God, we must prioritize speaking to God's people in schools, prisons, wherever the, the, the spirit of God will take you. Talk to God's people. They, we, we, we have the Boda Boda Chapel every Sunday. Every Sunday. People of God are walking into capacity. We need to hold hands. We need to hold hands and share and, and preach the gospel. Because we do not have much time. The Great Commission is our priority. Praise the Lord. Jesus came with a mission to accomplish. He came with a mission to accomplish. He was so committed. He, was, he, he, he is so focused on what he's doing. He is Jesus excellently done his work. And in the meantime, as he did this work, he remained in a place of prayer. Friends, shall we remain in a place of prayer? I do not want to mention a religion that, 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 that prays five times a day. If they can do that five times a day, how about you and me who is, who is praying to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Let's charge ourselves. It is, it is that, that charge of the spirit of prayer that enabled Christ to do excellent, excellent Let's keep focused, keep our eyes on Christ. It will enable us to say no to things that are merely good, things that are not essential. There is so much of junk we need to, I personally need to sort out. So much junk, seemingly good, but when I, I put it on the scale, uh -uh, it's not a priority. Christ is my priority. The name of the Lord ought to be our priority. Praise the living God. So, because Jesus, God, proclaimed the good news of the kingdom in the city, Far and near, he walked. He did not complain. He did not give up. 
that is the Christ we emulate. That is our motto, my motto. We ought to remain in a place of reading the word. That is one of the practical ways of building intimacy with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have discovered my greatest source of strength in life will come from my relationship with God through his word. Because when I read the word, I hear clearly. Start your day in the word of God. There is reading the word and, and, and you don't hear. But tune yourself in the power of the Holy Spirit that you may hear, that I may hear what is he saying exactly so that I do not lose direction. And it is through daily confession of sin. Sin, we will not have that intimate relationship with God unless we daily come to him and confess. Because personally, I sin every day, every hour. I do not even know how many times I sin. My eyes, my mouth, my thoughts, my hands, my feet, ever sinning. We must, I personally must come to that level of con daily confession of sin. Because Christ the one I'm striving to have a relationship with, with is a holy God. He does, there's no two way when it comes to sin, sin is sin. How am I going to, 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 to work on my, on my relationship with him when I'm clogged? When I'm clogged? Praise the Lord. Another, another area where we need to, 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 to work and strengthen our relationship with God, a, a, a closer walk, is through spending time with deep, mature believers. People who genuinely love the Lord. People who have a personal relationship with Christ. They will hold my hand and take me to another level. I am tired of moving in circles. I am tired of immature relationships in the name of, 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 of brethren. I'm asking the Holy Spirit this morning as he, he, he aligns me in a deep relationship with him, as he continues to prune me, to mature me, to make me Christ-like in character, that I will reach out to a young convert and multiply myself in him or her. Let us walk in, in the spirit so that we are led of the spirit. Let us turn up for Bible fellowships, for church activities. Let us grow spiritually. That is cultivating a relationship with Christ. That's why the, the, the cathedral leadership is calling for parishioners Sunday after Sunday. Those who would love to work to, 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 to sign up in different ministries, please come. They are encouraging them to sign up that they may come in and 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 find a deeper relationship with Christ because friends we have those who are not growing at all in a relationship with Christ those who are stagnant it's me and you to walk to one of them two of them four of them and we walk with them we are not going to wait for the cathedral to announce 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 we thank God if they announce and the people turn up for discipleship. But you and I, now that we are at a, a different level, Christ has, 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 has taken us to another level. We, we, are, uh, we are more mature. These people need us because the people of God, 
you listen to their stories, there is, they are going through so much really. Yes, the, 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 next, the next point I want to talk about is um, in, in cultivating or working on our, on our relationship with God is that we need the obedience of Christ. In John 14, 23, the obedience of Christ through his word, through the commandments, application. We need to, to be obedient. What we read in the word, we, we, we apply. But also we need to, to look out for what is hindering my relationship with Christ. We often allow the busy schedules to replace um, time with Christ, probably the children, probably the sickness, the, the issues that people of God we are going through, different. So may God help us. May God help us to be able to, to sort or to align those areas. And where we have been prayerless, may God help us to pop us through the Holy Spirit to kick out prayerlessness. Prayerlessness, the family altar must pray. We must pray. Pray with your husband. I hold hands with my husband. We pray. I pull out the Bible. I make the rotter so that the, 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 the dryness in the, in the house is kicked out. We must kick out prayerlessness. We must kick out prayerlessness. So as we come before God, I pray that our, our faith will get to another level. Our desire to, to, to be at the feet of Christ, even when things do not make sense around you, you seem to be deeply troubled. Keep your eyes on Christ. Keep in the word. Pray. Kneel. Pray, pray, and pray. Pray, read the word, read the psalms, the hymns. Pray. Cultivate a relationship with God. Cultivate a relationship with God. If you're burdened because of unforgiveness, ask the Lord to forgive. Ask the Lord to give you a lighter heart. Ask the Lord to start a new work in you. Ask the Lord to mend your relationships. Ask the Lord that, Lord, every morning, as soon as I wake up, I want to hear you speak to me. I want to see you. I want to have a deeper hunger with you for your word and purpose yourself. You purpose. You say, no, I am not going to go for this function. I choose to go and attend the midday prayer at, at cathedral which happens every Saturday. I am not going to, to, to eat. No. God, because I want a deeper relationship with you, you kill my appetite for physical food this day that I may, may remain in, in, in that deep relationship with you. Because the more we remain in him, the more we seek him, the more he comes closer, the more he comes closer. Be patient in your relationship with Christ. Even if you've not seen your answer come to pass, that should not hinder you from keeping in that relationship. Be there, be there and wait patiently as you enjoy day to day that relationship. As you tell your word, yes, even go, though I go through these valleys, shadows of death, the joy of the Lord shall continue to be my strength. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Let us Amen. purpose. Let us purpose in this season 
in this year not to remain in a relationship with God that is stagnant because he desires that we bask in his presence in, in that relationship, happy together no matter what. No matter what may come our way, we have decided that the world is behind us. We are one with Christ in an intimate relationship that we are continually building. And as we build, let me tell you, brethren, the enemy will demolish, but we keep building and building and building because that's how Job, Job, he was building a relationship with Christ. The enemy was busy demolishing. Hmm? The enemy, for those of us who are married, the enemy probably can even use your spouse to demolish your relationship with God. Be alert. Stay in the place of prayer. Jesus remained in that place of prayer day and night. He prayed. He prayed and prayed. I pray that we will enjoy fellowship with God. I pray that our fellowship with God will go to another level. I pray that we will remain there in fellowship. We remain there even when we have uh, issues or conflicts at cathedral, that the joy of the Lord shall be our strength. I'm not praying that we get conflicts at cathedral, but disagreements will come. So do I give up my relationship with, with, with God because I'm disagreeing with so and so? A friend of mine was encouraging me this evening. I'm, I'm, I'm going through a challenge. She told me, no, joy, be there. Come, let's do this. You see? So that is the relationship that God wants us to have. And if we remain close with each other, call someone, encourage one another. You're going through a tough situation. You know, there is no situation that can that we will last forever. There is no situation that will last forever. Let us hold hands. Let us remain in prayer. Let us enjoy that relationship with God. Because like Simon Peter, he called you and I to walk with him, Jesus Christ, and we reign with him forever and ever in a deep, beautiful relationship. Praise the living God. So I want to pray that God will continue to strengthen us, strengthen you, strengthen me in my walk with him, in our walk with him, that we will not allow these distractions because we are even egos. We so high, okay? So I pray that, that the relationship that we'll ha we have with Jesus Christ will go to another level, take it to another level in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, friends. Amen. God bless you to Aunt Joy. Thank you so much. Now, friends, we've had so many things from Aunt Joy. I think she needed like three hours because she was still telling us things. Uh, but unfortunately, we are coming to the close of this session. And uh, just to remind you of uh, things she said, uh, she told us that uh, Jesus' desire for us is to have oneness with him uh, and with the Father, and that uh, when we pray, we engage him with God uh, in a relationship, and it's a priority. So uh, prayer is like eating, and if you don't eat, you'll be mad uh, spiritually. And uh, she told us uh, that we need the more, when the, the more time we spend before God, the more strength we attain uh, spiritually and actually physically. And uh, the other thing she said, um, she also reminded us that we can should share everything with God, everything. When you're talking to God, don't hold this your father. So when you come before your father and you have any sort of challenge, whatever, and uh, she reminded us that Jesus is our model. So when we are praying, we are dealing with the prayer life, we need to look uh, up to Jesus uh, in the uh, today's uh, scripture, which was uh, Mark chapter 1, verse uh, 35. We see how Jesus prayed, and it's not the only scripture, as she reminded that it's not the only scripture that talks about how Jesus prayed. So she asked us to, uh, not to neglect prayer 
and to eliminate distractions by going into solitude like Jesus used to. And we should remain in a close relationship with God. And if we remain in a close relationship with the secrets that Reverend Paulson shared with us at the beginning, we see from God what we are asking for. Um, the other thing is that, uh, yeah, Jesus called people to repentance and um, we are reminded to evangelize to our families and in the marketplaces where we are. And uh, Christ and the name of the Lord is our priority. So we should spend our time with mature believers. We should walk in the spirit and be led by the spirit because when you walk with the spirit, you'll be led by the spirit. Uh, another thing uh, is uh, asked us to remain in a place of reading the word and to turn our lives, to turn yourself in, to, you turn yourself to the power of the Holy Spirit. And the uh, last thing, uh, she reminded that's what she says, our sins before God because He's a holy God. So if we daily confess our sins uh, before God, then we can come before the, the holy God and we can walk with Him. The lessons that we've learned today. Thank you, Charles. I pray. Uh, dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the word that we've received today. Thank you for gathering us here and ministering to us through our dear sister Joy. Lord, you've taught us about uh, building intimacy with you through prayer. Father, we ask that this message which you have given us will settle into our spirits and replay within us so that we can heed the message and act. Give us wisdom and help us to recognize that, that there's no relationship more important than our relationship with you, God. Father, King of heaven, and that we ask you to pour on us your spirit of prayer and supplication. Lord, we ask you to deliver us from anything that is hindering us from cultivating a deeper intimacy with you. Father, we ask you to give us strength to get up and pray. Father, <clears throat> strengthen us to stay at the altar in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to set our priorities aright and to use our best time to seek your face, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask you to give us a yearning for God that can only be quenched in his presence in the name of Jesus. Lord, give us the grace, the courage, and the strength to daily share your word in our families and in our communities in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.